It is often said that Bach's music is full of counterpoint. What is counterpoint? Let's see if I've got the... Yesterday Ya da 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 If I would do a second voice to it and da 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 Actually it is something like a counterpoint. It's a second voice, but would you, Schwann, call that a counterpoint? Not really. Because there are two voices but both of them sort of do the same movement. Yeah. In a quite homophonic way of and polyphonic means that the voice has some sort of independence. If I would like say try to now it sounds a bit like a in second a, a two part invention of Bach does it yeah. like the two voices are talking to each other in a way. Yeah. Each saying something different. And we were talking in the fugue, the basic Schwan Castini. Then I could find a counterpoint perhaps. Of course, we've got a cadence here. There are harmonical and voice leading rules which help me to find a fine counterpoint. What could be one of the most common rules that you also find in Bach? for leaving the voices. That you don't make any parallel things like dee da 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 dee dee. Now listen to it here. They're on the same voice and they go in the same direction. That it would be a unison which you have perhaps in the, in the Beethoven style. So it's actually true what we said in the beginning, Bach's music is full of counterpoint. And not only Bach's music, but all the music before Bach a lot. I think after the, the, the people have started working with two voices, it's, it's the birth of the counterpoint. It's a, an interesting uh, voice to the main subject, which has got a sort of independence, like I said. Thank you for those insights, Rudy.